Let's now talk about the phonograms I and Y. What sounds do I and Y make? That's right, they make the sounds I, I, E, and Y. They share all of these sounds. So let's talk about when each one will say these sounds. Let's begin by exploring the sounds of Y at the end of the word. We are going to do this by using a, another chart. You will see this chart on page 153 of your teacher's training manual. What I want you to do is I want you to fill in the words as you hear them. All of these words end in a Y. And I want you to fill them in as I, I, or E words. Is the Y saying I, is it saying I, or is it saying E? So the very first word is baby. What do you hear the Y saying at the end of the word in baby? That's right, it's saying the long E sound. So you'll put it in the long E column. How about in cry? That's right, it's saying the long I sound. So you can write it in the long I column. How about try? Once again, it's saying long I. How about lady? Where will you place lady? That's right, in the long E column. How about heavy? Heavy, the Y is saying E, so it's in the long E column. How about copy? Copy will go in the long E column. And fly, there's a long I word. And dry, once again, long I. What do you notice about these words? Well, all of the words where I says the long I sound are one syllable words, and all of the words where I is saying the long E sound are multisyllable words. So the rule says when a one syllable word ends in a single vowel Y, it says I. Y says it's long E sound only at the end of a multisyllable base word. I need to warn you, there are a few words in English where there's a multisyllable word where the Y says the long I sound, such as apply, but there are not very many of them. There are thousands and thousands of words where Y says the long E sound at the end of a multisyllable word. Now, when does the phonogram I make the long E sound? Let's once again have you discover this principle. You can look at the words on the screen. These words are also found in page 154 of the teacher's training manual. What pattern do you see here? I'll give you a moment to think about it, and I'll read a few of the words aloud for you. Medium, helium, radio, patio, studio. What you might notice is that I is saying the long E sound at the end of the syllable. However, that syllable is also preceding a vowel. So the rule is, I says long E only at the end of a syllable that is followed by a vowel. All right, let's go a little deeper with the I and Y. What sounds do the phonograms I and Y make at the end of the syllable but in the middle of the word? So when these phonograms are found at the end of the syllable in the middle of the word, what happens? You have a list here which you can study. We have the word clinic. What is I saying in clinic? That's right, it's saying I. How about in terrible? It's saying I. Family? It's saying I. If we drop down to physical, the Y is saying I, or typical. So Y may say I at the end of the syllable in the middle of the word. What is it saying in pilot, quiet, title, silent, typo? Here I and Y are saying the long I sound. So the rule is that I and Y may say I or I at the end of the syllable. This accounts for what's really happening in English, and it's a little bit more complex than the other vowels. Now let's go on and talk about how to add a suffix to words that end in Y. We have here, and I'll let you discover the rule, we have the word dry and we add the suffix ed. Ed is a vowel suffix because it begins with a vowel, and what do you notice happens? we change the Y to an I. Then we have the word happy and we add the vowel suffix ER and the Y changes to an I. We have the word hungry and we add the suffix LY. Now LY is a consonant suffix and what happens? The Y changes to an I. We have the word happy and it ends in a Y. We're adding the consonant suffix NES and I changes to Y. So you might realize that I uh, changes to Y when adding 
any suffix. However, there are a few suff there is are a few suffixes when it doesn't change. So what happens when we have dry and we add the ending ing? You'll notice that we keep the y. Now the suffix ing starts with an i, and two words are not or two i's cannot be together in English words. Then we have the word baby, and we make it baby-ish with the i s h suffix, and you'll see that we retain the y. Or steady, and we add i n g. We retain the y. So the full rule says single vowel y changes to i when adding any ending, unless the ending begins with i. One of the unique aspects of the logic of English is the logic of English suffix flowchart. This flowchart is a powerful tool for adding a suffix to any word in English, and adding suffixes to English words can be very difficult. I want to take a moment and practice this skill using just the silent final e words and the words ending in a single vowel y. In a little bit, we're going to be learning about words that end in one vowel followed by one consonant. I would encourage you to pull out the suffix flowchart found on page 158 of your teacher's training manual and use this to answer the questions with me. So let's begin with the word temporary, and we're going to add the suffix ly. Let's begin with the first question at the top of the chart. Does it end with a silent final e? No. Does it end in one vowel and one consonant? No. Does it end in a y? Yes. Since we answered yes, we will drop down to the section that says single vowel y. Does it end with a single vowel y? Now, a single vowel y is just a y. It's not an ay or an oy. It's not a phonogram that has a y as part of it. And temporary ends in a single vowel y. Does the suffix begin with any letter except i? Yes. If yes, change the y to i and add the suffix. So you will see that we change the y to i and then add ly to get temporarily. Let's do the next word, behave, plus the suffix ing. Does it end, does behave, end with the silent final e? Yes. Therefore, we'll drop down to the silent final e box. Are we adding a vowel suffix? A vowel suffix is a suffix that begins with a vowel. And the suffix ing begins with a vowel, so we answer yes, and we can keep going. Is dropping the e allowed by other spelling rules? And it tells you which rules you need to consider here. C softens to s before an e, i, or y. G may say j before e, i, or y. Those rules don't come into play, so dropping the e is allowed by other spelling rules. And if yes, we just drop the e and add the suffix. So you can see that we drop the e in behaving, and we can go on. Now let's look at the word courage, and we're going to add the ending us. Uh, O-U-S means full of, so courageous is full of courage. And we need to begin at the top. Does it end in a silent final E? Yes, courage ends in a silent final E. So we're going to drop down to the silent final E box. Are we adding a vowel suffix? Yes, we are adding a suffix that begins with an O, and that's a vowel, so we can go on. Is dropping the E allowed by other spelling rules? What would it say if we dropped the E in courageous? It would say courageous. So no, it is not. So we must retain the E in courage to make courageous. Let's go on to the word employment. We're going to add, uh, we're going to add meant to employ. So does employ end with a silent final E? No. Does it end in one vowel followed by one consonant? No. Does it end in a Y? Yes, it does. So let's drop down to the Y box. Does it end in a single vowel Y? No, it does not. It ends in the phonogram OY. Therefore, we must retain the Y and add the suffix meant. The final word is simplify. We're going to add the ending ing. So let's ask the questions. Does simplify end in a silent final E? No. Does simplify end in one vowel followed by one consonant? No. Does simplify end in a Y? Yes. So we can drop down. Does simplify end in a single vowel Y? Yes. So if yes, oh, does the suffix begin with any letter except I? No, it does not. It begins with an I. So if no, retain the Y 
and add the ending. So you'll see that we keep the Y and simplify to make simplifying. The logic of English uh, reference chart can be a useful tool for you as you are adding suffixes to words. You'll see uh, in the example on the screen that the logic of English reference chart includes the flow chart for suffixes right on the cover as in a colorful version. In the interior of this chart, all the phonograms are listed and many of the phonograms that are used in only a limited number of words the complete word list is listed as well. So this can be a great tool for you to keep by your desk as you're adding suffixes and trying to reference phonograms. Let's now go on to the concept of words that end in one vowel followed by one consonant. Interestingly enough, these words are some of the words that create the most difficulty for us in English spelling. And Unfortunately, many of them are the most simple words for students to learn to read at the beginning, but then when we go to add suffixes to them, there can be a bit of complexity. In fact, it may surprise you to know that when I was writing and covering the logic of English, the most difficult chapter in that entire book to write by far was the chapter about vowels or words ending in one vowel followed by one consonant. We probably rewrote it 35 or maybe even 40 times before all of our proofreaders and editors were satisfied with it. So I hope you can follow along carefully with me as I try to explain this concept. It is simple in the beginning and it gets a little bit more complicated. So you might want to watch this section more than once. So let's start with the simple part, the part that's very straightforward. If we have a word such as run, it ends in one vowel followed by one consonant. And if we're adding the um, vowel suffix ing, we're going to double the consonant before we add the suffix. The same with bag, if we want to make it past tense and add the suffix ed, we're going to double the g and make bagged. Or win, if we're going to add er, we're going to double the n to make winner. Plan, double the n to make planned. This seems very straightforward. Now what happens if we add a consonant suffix? Bag plus full, we will not double the g. Ship plus meant, we will not double the p. Cup plus full, we will not double the p. So the rule at the beginning says double the last consonant when adding a vowel suffix to words ending in one vowel followed by one consonant. Now you'll notice there's an only if statement there. Let's hold off on that statement for just a moment and dig a little deeper. All right, we have the word stick and we're going to add the suffix er. Will we double the last consonant? No. Why not? Because it doesn't end in only one consonant. We have a two-letter consonant here. Okay, we have the word sleep and we want to add the ending ing. Will we double the consonant p in sleep? No, because we have a two-letter vowel, e double e. All right, we have the word hop and we want to add the ending ing. Will we double the consonant? Yes, we will because it ends in one vowel followed by one consonant. So we get hopping. Now let's contrast that for a minute to hoping. You'll notice in hoping there's only one P because it was a silent E word and we dropped the E. Many, even adult speakers of English, confuse the word hopping and hoping in their writing and in their reading. We have the word pin and we want to make the word pinning. Will we double the N? Yes. And let's go ahead and compare that to pining. Notice pining has only one N because this was a silent final E word. Now, this rule is pretty straightforward when we're dealing with one syllable words, but let's go ahead and look at that second part of the rule. So let's begin again. Double the last consonant when adding a vowel suffix to words ending in one vowel followed by one consonant only if the syllable before the suffix is accented. Now, we spent a bit of time earlier in this training talking about the importance of accent in words, and here's where it comes uh, to becomes very vital to understand how to find an accented syllable. Now, let's once again begin very simple. We have the word get, and we add the ending ing, and we will double the t's, and we get getting. Notice the syllable get before the suffix ting, or before the con is accented, so it's going to have a double T. Now what happens if we have the word forgetting? Forget plus ing. 
Where is the accent for getting? It's on get still, so we will double the t's. We have the word begin, and we want to add the suffix er. Where's the accent? Beginner. It's on gin, so we will double the ends to make beginner. Now let's contrast it with opener. Open plus er. Where's the accent in opener? It's on o, so will we double the ends? We will not, because the accent is not on the syllable before the suffix. All right, how about occurred? Occurred. Where will we have the accent? Occurred. It's on the cur, so we will double the er sound here, so we'll have two r's. How about in equipped? Where will the accent be? Equipped. That's right, it's on the quip, so we need to double the p's. Very good. How about in equipment? Will we double? Oh, I caught you. We will not double. Why? because it's a consonant suffix here, so we're not adding a vowel suffix. So we do not double the p's in equipment. All right, how about in preferred? Preferred. Here the accent is on fur, so we're going to double the r's. Very good. How about in preference? Now here we have prefer and ents. Where is the accent in preference? You're right, it's on pref. So we will not double the r's in preference because the accent is not on the syllable before the suffix.